Hey, what's going on ladies and gents, it's different neighborhood content creator. I wanted to make a video about Yai Miko's weapons, artifacts, and builds that you guys might want to consider building for your future Yai Miko. A lot of you guys might be wondering what's the best weapon for her, what's the best artifact set, talents am I supposed to level up, whatever it may be. And let me just tell you, the talents we don't know just yet, unless you're a bit of a dreamer. So I'm gonna leave that up to you guys. But we can talk about the weapons on our artifact sets for her certain type of role. So which role are you going to give her? Are you going to have her be a sub DPS? Are you going to have her be a DPS? Is she a healer? Is she whatever? All right, I'm gonna be talking about all of that in this video. Now for, I'm just going straight into the artifacts here. So if you guys want a sub DPS, a burst sub DPS support type of Yaimiko, where you can just swap into Yaimiko, hit her burst or elemental skills and then leave the field. This is the artifact set for you. You want the emblem of severed feet or peace. Now this is really good because you have the extra energy recharge. You got the elemental burst damage increase. This is amazing. Of course, you would want to stack energy recharge as well. Well, her burst is going to cost a lot if she is a sub DPS type of burst support and you kind of want to stack a lot of energy recharge. Does that mean that you have to have energy recharge on your sand? That is not necessarily the case. So what you would want to have is a bunch of energy recharge on your substats. If you guys can see here on my sands, you can see that I have 11.7% on the energy recharge roll. You kind of want that to be spread out over across all your artifacts. So if I go over here, I don't have energy recharge, which means I should probably replace peace with another electro damage bonus set. Now here we have a crit rate piece on the circlet with a good amount of crit damage uh, for the you know substats. However, there is no energy recharge here, which means I should probably find another crit rate helmet or circlet to get this a little bit better. Now, as you guys can see, there's a little bit of a trend here for me looking for energy recharge. Now here we have 11% on the energy recharge for the feather. This is an okay feather, it has a decent amount of crit damage, has an attack percentage, but it did roll a bunch of times into HP, which is not the thing you want the most. Sort of want to stack energy recharge, crit rate, and crit damage. Obviously, you want to have attack percentage as well in order for it to deal the most amount of damage in her burst. Here we have a flower. It's pretty new, it's plus six, but it has almost everything you want from this flower. You have a to mastery, you have crit damage, you have energy recharge. But the HP percentage could have gone into crit rate, which is a little bit unfortunate. So we're just going to have to farm a little bit more. Uh, you guys uh, can see there's also this flower. There's this flower, all of which are, you know, eligible to be pretty good flowers for her. And yeah, if you guys want a sub DPS burst, this is the artifact set to go to. Remember, you want to stack a lot of energy recharge on your substats, as well as creating crit damage in order to deal the most amount of damage with her. Burst. Uh, for the weapons for this type of build, you sort of want to have a crit damage weapon if you have a crit circlet. So if you have so if you have a book such as the Widsith, which has a bunch of crit damage on it, and it's a pretty good book, that is an excellent book for you guys to go to in order for you guys to have that ad, you know adequate crit rate crit damage uh, ratios. However, if you guys don't have that like me, there are decent books that you could use, such as the free Dodoko Tales, which has a bunch of attack percentage on it, but the base attack is kind of low. It will help your normal attack and charge attack. So this type of weapon would only serve your main DPS, Yai Miko, which is a different type of build than what we're going for with the Emblem of Severed Fate. So you kind of want to have recruit rate crit damage built on her. Um, obviously you could go with something with Elemental Mastery in general. It won't really help you that much seeing that she is an Electro character, but if in her build there's something with Elemental Mastery that does assist her, does help her route a little bit more to do more damage, these are two weapons that you could go for, especially Map and Mare which is absolutely free. This is a free to play option if you guys want to have the most amount of damage for elemental skill and elemental burst. Now, let's say you want to build a main DPS Yai Miko, you're going to have to change this entire thing and provide some sort of electro damage bonus. So you're going to have a two piece of the Thundering Fury set here and only the two piece. The four piece is not good at all and I would not recommend it. You would want to have a two piece for the Thundering Fury and maybe two piece of the Kiminawa set. Kiminawa gives you that attack percentage that you can get from the 
beautiful domain with the emblem severed fate so if you guys have a better set for the emblem severed fate you can go with that one or the better set for the shimanao set you can also go for that one so the reason why you want to have this for your main dps build is because this gives you that nice attack percentage increase and that's what you sort of want or if you just want to ignore the thundering fury set you can go for a four piece of this set as well however you're not going to get your burst a lot and that is not what you want with yai miko so please do consider going for the thundering fury two piece and a shimanawa two piece if you want a main dps for your yai miko obviously if you don't have shimanawa you can use the gladiators you know finale set um, this is an okay set as well, it gives you that attack percentage increase as well. Same thing, same exact thing. Now, if you want a full on just burst support, just burst, burst DPS, you just want burst, Emblem Sever Fate is your best friend. And if you don't have that set, you can use the Noblesse Oblige for support burst. Now, support burst is different than sub DPS, right? Support burst is you have the or piece of the Nebulas of Lodge. Once you use your amount of burst, you get obviously the nice bonus of 20% increase, as well as you give your party members 20% increase of attack. So you're going to help increase the amount of burst damage of your own skill, as well as your teammate get an increase of 20% more attack. This is not a bad build to go for if you want a you know support type build for Yaimiko. So if you're running Raiden Shogun, if you're running you know Kujasara, this is a nice in between where you swap to her, use her elemental burst and elemental skill, dip out of her thing, go to Kujasara and then go Raiden Shogun. Very nice, just off of each other type of team composition. Now I did a lot of talking on the artifact set. I could also go over some weapons that you might want to use for her as well so there are a bunch of catalysts that you guys could be using in order for you guys to get the proper crit ratio that you want by doing a you know crit rate crit damage ratio type of it. so there are a bunch of good catalysts that you guys might want to make use of but yeah that's going to be it for the high miko build hopefully you got something out of this video if you did consider liking this video subscribing to the channel as well but I'm trying to get, get 1,000 subscribers, guys. So it'll be really awesome if you guys help me out there. It'll be amazing. Thank you guys so much. See you guys in the next video very soon. Goodbye.